Welcome to Empowering Lives with Purpose, and I'm your host, Kimberly Hobbs. I'm the founder of Women World Leaders, and we are just so grateful that you are here and decided to join us today. We are in for a treat because we have uh, Kristen Clark with us from Girl Defined. Kristen, thank you for joining us today. Hey there. It is so good to be here. I can't wait to have this conversation. It's going to be a good one. (laughs) Yes, ladies, we are talking about marriage today and the importance of marriage. And Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we've got some great things to share. Kristen is already. So what I what our um, desire to do through this podcast series, ladies, is to strengthen you, empower you, encourage you in the name of our Lord. And so we we love to uh, pray and hope that Uh, something sparks inside of you that as we're talking and sharing that you may think about this relating to your own life. And um, we're women with stories and helping share our stories to empower other women. So God says in Ephesians 2.10 that we are his masterpiece. We are created anew in Christ Jesus to do the things that he planned for us long ago And ladies, he has a plan for each and every one of our lives. And so let's, let's get into today and talk about, um, first, I want to introduce Kristen Clark to you. Kristen is married to her best friend, Zach, and she is the co-founder of Girl Defined. Girl Defined is an amazing ministry that uh, speaks to the younger women, um, the teens and the college students and Um, They have just a beautiful, amazing ministry where they are, oh my goodness, they have about um, 160,000 followers. And so God is truly blessing this ministry and they are speaking to the hearts of these young women. And that blesses my heart just to see Mm -hmm. another woman in ministry just sharing from her heart. So it's beautiful. That's what we're all about, sharing Mm -hmm. stories, right, Kristen? Yes. Love it so much. Love it. Kristen has also written many books with her sister. Um, They've written Girl Defined, Love Defined, Sex, Purity, and the Longings of the Girl's Heart. And she is passionate about promoting God-defined womanhood. And she does that through blogging, speaking, and mentoring young women. And now they've just started podcasts too. Yay! So be sure to look for them. They are just amazing, this duo, the sister team. And I love <laughs> what you're doing for Jesus, girl. Keep going. Thank you. She loves the host Bible studies, and she's just a fun-loving Texas girl. Yeah. And- She adores the outdoor life, and she loves to snuggle with her little uh, Mm multi-poo. So, oh, Kristen, we are just thrilled to have you today, and uh, you're going to share about marriage and fulfillment in Christ and keeping God the focus of marriage. How important is that right now, especially in these young married lives, because they're distracted by so many things. Mm -hmm. So let's get started here, and um, Kristen, Kristen, a a little bit before you got married, you were in modeling and, mm-hmm. um, and you're beautiful for those that are listening, Aww. she is a tall, blonde, gorgeous woman, <laughs> and God has gifted her with beauty. But in that modeling world, you were faced with a lot of temptations and distractions, um, yeah. from keeping you from your focus on Christ. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So modeling was something that actually the first time I thought about it, I was probably nine or 10 years old. And this lady came up to me. I was shopping with my mom out at some shopping center in the middle of a Texas summer. I was so hot. I was so tired. I just wanted to be done. And this lady came running over to us and she just said, excuse me, excuse me. Can I, can I ask you a question? And she was kind of looking at me and looking at my mom. 
And she said, um, does your daughter do any modeling? And I'm like nine or 10, right? So I'm, I'm like me modeling. I'm like a kid. What are you talking about? <laughs> and she just said, you know, I noticed your daughter walk by and she's tall and I just think she'd be a great fit. And, you know, I work for, or she said, I own a modeling agency and we actually recruit girls as young as your daughter and they come and live with us and we train them to be top models. Oh my. And so she's telling my mom this and I'm just standing there like eyes wide going, what is happening? And my mom was so gracious and flattered and just said, you know, thank you so much. Uh, we'll, we'll think about it, but probably not what we're thinking we're going to do, you know, but thanks anyways. And so the lady said, okay, well, here's my business card. Just think about it. And, you know, afterwards, my mom and I were kind of talking and I was like, oh, that was crazy. And, you know, from that moment on, I think before, I don't think before that I had really questioned or thought a lot about beauty You know, I was pretty young, mm. but I was those preteen years. And that question, that, that approach from that lady sent me kind of in my own heart on this journey of wondering, okay, well, what does it mean to be a beautiful girl? What does it mean wow. to be beautiful? And, and then I started, you know, comparing myself to other girls. Well, that girl, you know, is she pretty, you know, I don't look like her. So am I pretty? Am I not pretty? And you know, what would it be like to be a model? And that question of, wow, I wonder, you know, if I could ever be a model someday, that question never left me. And I think deep in my heart, I started to buy into this lie that having, uh, being validated through my outward appearance, through beauty would somehow give me more worth and value, um, than what I yes. can even find in Christ. And so I started comparing, started wondering, um, tr uh, met, trying to measure up to everybody's expectations of just the culture, the world around me, you know, then I get on social media and it's like a whole new ball game. Uh, but that question never left me. And so when I was, Kristen, around, I, I just have to say that. really quick, oh my goodness. Um, you know, ladies, we never realize truly how yeah. one, one statement can impact mm -hmm. a, a child's life forever. Yeah. And by that yeah. woman running up to you in front of, um, your mom and talking yeah. in front of you is what I'm saying mm -hmm. that left an impression on your oh, young yeah. life. Oh, it, that you never let go of. Right. Right. No, I, and to this day, I can, I can so vividly picture that experience. And cause that was kind of the start of it, of that questioning in my heart of what does yes. it mean to be truly beautiful? What does it mean to be truly accepted, truly loved to have worth and value? And the, I didn't know I was asking all those questions. Right. But that's what right. was happening. And so when I was 19 or 20, you know, I played sports in high school. I wasn't really thinking much about modeling. I continued to get random offers from people. Like I'd be in a store and they just hand me their card. Like, Oh, I work for this agency. Come check us out or whatever. Never did anything about it. But then when I was 19 or 20, I don't know something in me, I just graduated high school and I just felt this, this yearning to, to pursue that, you know, it was kind of like this unexplored path that I'd never really looked into my, I was raised in a wonderful Christian home. My parents weren't really encouraging me necessarily to go down the modeling route because there are so many pitfalls and just, yeah. you know, being a young woman who's trying to pursue Christ and, and just even things like purity, just the modeling industry is, it's very corrupt and I'm um, very immoral. And it's hard for young women in that industry. There's so many temptations and just the pressure to be perfect, to look perfect. It's, mm. it, it's insane. And so yes. they were not encouraging me. But for myself, I was like, well, I, I just really want to try this. And so I reached out to one of the agencies that had contacted me, contacted me and just said, Hey, you know, how does it work with you guys? Um, I do have some morals and some standards. Will that jive in the modeling industry? And they were like, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we're a family friendly agency. Come on down. Like, let's have an interview. And so like, okay, was it a Christian agency? No, no, they were not a Christian no, agency, but they just, just like they claimed they just said, you know, we are, we're anti-porn agency. We're family friendly. And so I was like, okay, well that's, that's something. Cause that's not true for most other agencies. So I went down, had an appointment at their office. They, they were based out of LA, but had an office in San Antonio. And so met with them in person. And she called me the next day and was like, Hey, we want to like, we want to hire you come on down. You have to sign a one-year contract or whatever. So I did. And, you know, in my heart, I, I bought the lie that, wow, if I could, be, just become a model. If I could have that title, wow. um, you know, Kristen, the model, then that would give me so much validation. That would give me so much worth in other people's eyes in my own eyes. And I wouldn't be insecure anymore. Right. I would just, right. I would struggle. I wouldn't compare. I'll, I'll, I'll have arrived. And I think that's the lie 
that as women, no matter how old or young you are, I still struggle with this, that we see these other women, we see, you know, on the front of People magazine, the world's most yeah. beautiful woman, you know, they come out with that addition and you're like, wait, but I look nothing like her. So I'm, I must be the world's ugliest woman, you know, oh but goodness. it's that question of like, okay, where do I find true worth and value? And I was trying to find it by people praising my outward appearance. And so I thought, okay, I'm a model now. I signed the contract. I am going to be so confident. Um, you know, I'm just going to be so content with my outward appearance and with everything about who I am. But I will tell you, it is the craziest thing that one year of modeling, of getting modeling jobs um, or not getting jobs, you know, I had a portfolio. Yep. So I would be told, hey, you're in the running for this opportunity. Um, we'll let you know if you get it. And so basically the, whoever the company, they would look at all the models uh, for this agency represented by this agency. And then they would pick the ones that they wanted. So I would know if I didn't get picked. Right. So that means, Oh, someone else is prettier. They didn't want maybe someone as tall as me or with mm. my color hair. So there I go again. Right. And I'm thinking, Oh, I'm going to be so confident as a model, but it was the opposite. I began to criticize my outward appearance more than ever before. I was wow. constantly striving to measure up to the other women. Um, I didn't feel this sense of worth and value from the, the modeling world that I thought I would get. Um, you know, people were telling me I was pretty, but I was so discontent. And I just realized in my heart at the end of that year, I was like, this is not what I expected it to be. This wasn't all your dreams come true kind of thing. And for me, it was so eye opening to see that no amount of mm. affirmation from other people is enough to fully satisfy us. Like it can't come from within ourselves, from others. It has to come from embracing our identity in Christ. And I Amen. really, God really humbled me and, and helped me to see that I had made an idol of outward beauty yes. and, and God was no longer on the throne, you know, pursuing beauty was on the throne. And it wasn't until I really humbled myself. And I just remember praying like, Lord, you've created me. I look just the way I do, not for myself, not to make my name great, not to get the affirmation of others, but really to use my life to make your name great, to point others to you. So would you help me to stop focusing so much on myself and instead to use my life to serve and to pour out? And that was a huge turning point for me. Huge. I know. And you know, then you entered into marriage and after you went through all of that, you know, looking to yourself yeah. to be better and all of, you know, being just so distracted because you were focused on self-help and getting yeah. yourself out there and taking the focus off of Christ, you go into a marriage. Mm -hmm. And as you were in your marriage, in the, in the beginning parts of your marriage, um, you just completely through yourself to your husband, mm -hmm. looking to him for all of yeah. the, the validation. I, can you talk about that for a little bit before we go forward on the proper yeah. way to, um, to be in a marriage that works for Jesus? Right. So talk about that. Right. Well, you're seeing a little bit of a pattern here in my life. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I think so many women can relate to that, right? We think, oh, this is going to be the answer. Okay. Beauty wasn't the answer. Oh, maybe having this awesome husband, he's going to fulfill all my hopes and dreams. So, right. um, I met Zach when I was 19, he was 18. He, we just became friends. So we were just friends for probably three or four years. I was really hoping something would happen. He wasn't really speaking up. So that was hard for me, uh, just surrendering that and trusting God with the timing of that. But he eventually did, um, pursue me and, and asked me out. And so we got into a relationship and, from the beginning, I mean, we were both very interested in each other and it was just, it was a really fun, like our dating, we dated for about a year. It was really fun. Just, we developed a really sweet friendship. Our families um, got to know each other and develop sweet friendships too. And we're both from the San Antonio area. So mm -hmm. it just, you know, seemed like, wow, God is really opening the store with this guy and he loves the Lord. He's this godly man. And, you know, he was taller too, which, <laughs> which uh. Bethany, Bethany and I joke because she married a guy who's a little shorter than her. I heard. So we, always, yes. we always joke about that. <laughs> um, but for me at the time, I was like, Lord, just two requests. Can he be godly and tall? <laughs> That's all I oh asked. My oh my goodness. <laughs> and then of course there's like the wish list, like, oh, and can he be athletic and play music? <laughs> you know, all the things that you're like, okay. Um, but yeah. Wow. Was, so you were really looking to him for all of these things. Yes. Right. Right. So we got married and I did not even realize it. I would never have said, Oh, I'm looking to my husband 
um, for all of my satisfaction or to really, you know, in our hearts, God has designed us to need him, whether we mm. realize that or not, he has designed us in his image to be in a relationship with him. That is Amen. where our hearts find peace, Amen. rest. That is where we find our ultimate sense of joy and purpose, um, regardless of what else is happening in our lives or regardless of how loved or unloved we are by anybody, we can be fully loved in Christ and fully satisfied in him. But early in my marriage, you know, I was so excited to get married and, you know, my husband is an amazing man and he was loving me, but because I was so focused on getting all of that love from my husband versus really looking to Christ, um, you know, naturally you start to critique and go, oh, well, why isn't he loving me more like that other, you know, friend's husband or, oh, why isn't he bringing me flowers more? Or, oh, does he really love me as much as I love him? I mean, I remember thinking that like, oh, I feel like I love him so much, but does he love me as much as I love him? Like just things that are going on in my heart. And it was really stemming from a place of, my husband in some ways was becoming an idol. Like he was the one, not that I was worshiping him, but it's like, he was on the center of my heart's affection where Christ needed to be. And there's a verse that, um, that I learned later on, but it's in the Psalms and it talks about the sorrows of those who chase after other gods will multiply. And, you know, that's talking about like physical gods, right. That they would worship like idols, stone statues. But these days, you know, as Christians in America, we don't have those stone statues often, but idols can come in so many forms. And in my heart, I saw that as my husband in so many ways was an idol in my heart, looking to him to be my Christ almost. Right. Um, Well, you were looking to him for that ultimate satisfaction, leaning this from him and that from him, which had to put a tremendous, um, for him too. He felt like he had to be everything to you. Yes everything that you wanted and only Jesus can satisfy that. Yeah. Which you started to figure that out. I started to figure it out. I think there, we even had a conversation once and, you know, it wasn't like this all the time. It wasn't this intense all the time. It was just moments that I would see this glimpse in my heart or I would feel the sense of dissatisfaction. And then I would want to, you know, maybe manipulate something in my marriage or, you know, become needy to the point of like, oh, well, why can't you just love me more like this? Like, this is how I need to be loved. And, you know, it was, it was wearisome for my husband at times. And I think we had a conversation. I can't remember when it was, but it was early on where he just said, you know, I, I can't be Jesus. (laughs) Like, I want to love you well, but I, I'm imperfect. I'm going to fail. And, you know, I don't want to sin, but I am a human. And it was just that eye-opening realization for me, realizing I think I am looking to my husband to be Jesus. I'm looking to him to be this perfect pursuer, this perfect lover, this perfect man who's going to fulfill every need and anticipate every longing of my heart. And I just realized I am looking to the wrong wow. man. <laughs> you know? Was that was that a turning point in your in yeah. your marriage? Yeah, it really wow. was. Yeah, to realize, you know, he he's he's not Jesus. And he never was meant to be Jesus. And that verse in Psalms, it became true. I started to see in my heart, there was, you know, the sorrows of those who chase after another gods, they will multiply. Like I wasn't gaining any more peace or security or um, feeling fully loved because my husband can't provide that perfectly. And I saw in my own Mm -hmm. heart, wow, that verse was becoming true in my own life. And I knew something needed to change. And it wasn't my husband who needed to change. It was me, my heart, what I was worshiping, who I was pursuing as number one that needed to change. Wow. Amen. Amen. So then what did you do? Like, did you, how did you find, um, Jesus as your soul, you know, just everything, Um, because there had to be a transition there where you went from looking to your husband for your main satisfaction. And how did you transition to find that Jesus was your one and only? Yeah. I know it started with the realization that I had been looking to my husband for those things. So for me, it was really, um, repentance, just going before the Lord on my Mm. own and just saying, God, I have been looking to my husband for what only you can give me for the satisfaction, the love, um, that only you can give me as my perfect creator, heavenly father. Um, you know, so I repent of that, that is sin to place him in that position in my heart. And so for me, it started with repentance And then, um, it's not like I was perfect after that. Right. You know, we can have like, Oh, I want to, I want God to be number one in my heart, but it is a continual battle for all of us to fight for that. And to ask God to help us even want that because in our flesh, it's not, it's, we want the opposite. And so it started with repentance and I just knew I needed to invest time 
into my relationship with the Lord. I needed to be spending more time in his word, getting to know him, reading his word, allowing his word um, to bring conviction to my heart, encouragement to my heart for me to see more clearly who God is, um, his character, how he is the only one who can satisfy, and then spending time in prayer. And I know prayer is something I continue to struggle to be consistent and faithful in because it's just in our fast paced world. Um, go, go, go getting on our phones. I mean, how many times has my phone distracted me from, you know, trying to pray. And so just knowing, wow, if I, if I truly want Christ to be my number one, I've got to pursue a relationship with him and not just like a Christian version, like, Oh, I love the Lord. But like, really, what does that look like on a daily basis to pursue a relationship with God? Yeah. And it's, it's really where the rubber meets the road and it takes time and you have to you know, faithfully get in the word and ask God through prayer to help you. And, you know, it's not easy, even though it doesn't cost anything, right? It's just right. busy people. We have to sacrifice. That. Yeah. Yes. It's almost like that you're planting that little seed mm-hmm. in the word and then it, you just cultivate it daily by doing those daily devotions, praying to the yeah. Lord, confessing your sin, and starting to make that relationship appear, you know, mm-hmm. in the marriage, because your marriage is going to crumble if you don't, if you don't have that personal relationship yeah. with Christ first. Yeah. So, um, so again, talk about practical ways that these women can put this into their life, because especially you, Kristen, right now is a young married woman, you know, in your young, you know, thirties, if I could say, mm-hmm. um, Honestly, <laughs> what you. are practical ways that they can prepare to uh, sustain their marriage with Christ? Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that we always say at Girl Defined is that the person you are before you get married is the person you're going to take with you into marriage. And I think there's this idea. I know I believed it. Oh, once I get married, I'm just going to transform into this godly woman who looks to Christ and is just so dedicated to the Lord. But really, you know, if my heart isn't as dedicated to the Lord before I get married, then that's the same heart I'm going to have in marriage. And I'm going to start looking to my husband, looking to whatever else to become my satisfaction. And and then I'm going to feel empty and I'm going to chase after something else. And so my advice for any woman, no matter how old you are, whether you are single or married is look at your heart, look at your character and go, okay, at the core, who am I? And then who does Christ call me to be? What type of woman um, does God say is beautiful in his sight? And it's the opposite of what we see in culture. It's the opposite of what we feel. Even what we're told is a strong woman, you know, the things that God values, um, not a woman who's just domineering and demanding her way and, you know, telling everyone like, you got to do what I want. It's like, it's the woman who is gracious and kind and patient and loving and self-sacrificing the essence of agape love, that self-sacrificing love that Christ has shown us, you know, that's the type of woman that God, that heart that he wants us to have, not that we become doormats at all. He wants us to be strong, but for the right things and with the right heart, a heart that's dependent on him, that's humble. Mm -hmm. And so working on our character and asking God to shape us to become a woman defined by him, as we see in scripture, the character that God cherishes that's the woman whether before marriage or after marriage that that he wants all of us to strive after and and you can do that whether you're single or married you can work towards that and when you do that ladies when you do when you surrender your life to him and put him first Mm -hmm. he does want to give you the desires of your heart just like Kristen was saying he wants to do more than you can ever imagine you know uh, when you again have the Holy Spirit that is alive and working in you, yes. Ephesians three twenty, which is the life verse um, of mine, and it of course is our verse for women world leaders, is unto Him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine, according to the power that's at work within us. When you have that power of the Lord working in you, ladies, there's nothing that He's going to hold back from you. So you want that perfect marriage. You want that beautiful, amazing marriage. Don't put your husband first, put God first. Mm -hmm. And God is going to show you and work through you how to be the right wife for that man you love so much. And then you are going to have that beautiful marriage together. And that's what Kristen is sharing because she lived it. She walked it. She knew it wasn't working by putting her husband first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's something I have to come back to. We are going to celebrate 10 years here 
Um, Amen. And, and a few months. Yeah. And I praise God for that. I know there are women who are way ahead of us down the road, Mary are ahead of me, so, married for so much longer. And then those who are much younger in their marriage, but it, this is something that I have to work on every single day. You know, my heart yeah. constantly wants to look to my husband. And I think it's natural for us women and God has given us, you know, for married women, our husbands can fill a beautiful role in our lives. Right. Thank I mean, they're physical, they're right there. There's a beautiful relationship that God ordained, but our husbands were never meant to be our savior. They were never meant to be the ones right. to fully love us, to give us our worth and value, to give us all the things that we can only find in Christ. But I find myself, even this past week, I was struggling with some things and I realized, you know, I think I am looking to Zach too much. Like I'm going to him mm -hmm. first before I even go to Christ with these things on my heart. And, um, and so it was just that gentle reminder of, okay, Lord, you are the one I need to pursue first and foremost, like the most of my heart. Yeah. And then I'm in a much better place to love my husband, to have a healthy relationship with him because I'm not looking to him to be my everything. And he yeah. appreciates so much, right. When I'm looking to Christ and then he's striving to do the same thing as a man to look to Christ first and foremost, so that he can be the godly husband in the marriage as well. Oh, that is great. A great word, Kristen. Thank you so much. And um, we're going to have to wrap it up. It's like time flies so much and I, know. I have so much to share. But um, so in closing, Kristen, speak mm -hmm. to the woman's heart that's listening right now that um, needs to put God as the focus of her marriage because maybe she has made the mistakes and doing things wrong and backwards. Mm -hmm. What would you share from your heart to help that woman that's struggling right in the beginning of her marriage? And yeah, yeah, I would just tell you right now as you're listening to these words that you are a woman created by God. He loves you so much and you were made for real intimacy. And that intimacy first and foremost comes from Christ. He loves yeah. you so much and created you to have an intimate relationship with him and those longings in your heart to be loved, to be cherished, to be pursued, to be known. All of those can be found in your relationship with Christ. And I just want to read the scripture over you. Psalm 1611 says, you make known to me the path of life in your presence, talking about God, there is fullness of joy at your right hand, our pleasures forevermore. And that wow. is, you know, no matter the quality of our marriage, if we feel like it's good, it's on the rocks as women, we can find that love, that value in Christ, that joy that only comes from our relationship with him. And beautiful, Kristen, beautiful. And ladies, I mean, that verse was gorgeous too. You know, God's word is full mm -hmm. of the most amazing uh, encouragement, ladies. So we just push you to God's word and say, read it, read it, yes. read it every yes. day. Get that relationship going with him. You need it. And you want to have a strong, healthy marriage. Go to God first. Love him with all your heart. And just he will give you the desires of your heart, ladies. Mm. So just thank you so much, Kristen, for sharing with us today, for being here. And we are just so blessed by what you shared and sharing some of your story with us. Ladies, you can look for Kristen on uh, girldefined.com. Look for some of their books and they have podcasts and they have videos and they're just an amazing ministry for young women. And I just am wowed by what they pour into these young women. So again, it's just a pleasure to share time with you today, Kristen. And uh, last week, ladies, I had interviewed her other, her other half in ministry, <laughs> with sister Bethany. So if you want to look up that podcast, um, Bethany gave some great tips in her interview and, um, uh, it was wonderful. So anyways, ladies, we are just uh, so happy that you joined us today. I do want to share with you that we have a Women World Leaders magazine coming out in January of 2021. Ladies, this magazine is going to be full color and beautiful. We have women from around the world that are sharing amazing stories, women like Kristen and uh, so many that God has brought into ministry that are just uh, empowering women in their own way. And they're writing in the magazine and this magazine is going to be jam packed with amazing things and the gospel of Christ. And that is why, because it contains the gospel of Jesus, it is going to go out into the world for free. Yes, that's for right for free. And if you would like your copy, ladies, uh, go to womenworldleaders.com contact us section and leave us your email for a digital copy 
or your home address and we will mail you uh, your printed copy and uh, we do not share that information. I also wanted to let you know that we are going to be uh, launching our book by Women World Leaders, which is Courageous Steps of Faith that comes out and we are so excited about it. And ladies, this is an inspiration and encouragement to you about how to take your own courageous steps of faith with God, all things are possible. And that can be um, purchased through our website at Women World Leaders. Uh, dot com in the shop section and also it will be available on amazon by uh we're hoping by december 1st let's say so look for that book coming out um again i just want to give a great thanks to Kristen for joining us Kristen clark thank you ladies for being here from his heart to yours we are women world leaders all content is copyrighted and cannot be used without express written consent please join us ladies on mondays wednesdays and fridays for these podcast series we have a trio of podcasts available to you and please share them with any woman that you feel can benefit from them god bless you all have a wonderful day